Hello students. So today, we, uh, today I'm doing class for class uh, 12 science. The topic is continuity and differentiability. So in the last online class also we did only continuity of a function. So now we will do continuity and differentiability together. Okay. So you know the meaning of continuity of a function. Now you should know the meaning of differentiability of a function. So what is the definition of differentiation? So uh, this uh, differentiability you did in class 11 also and we did in class 12 science also. Okay, so you know the differentiation of a function f of x, isn't it? So now let us revise it again. What do you mean by differentiability of a function? Okay, so let us assume that y is equal to f of x. Suppose y is a function of x you know the meaning of function of x i told you already about function of x right so let us assume y is equal to f of x let us mark it as number one okay now suppose there is there is a small increment in x a small increment suppose there is a small increment in x uh, corresponding to the increment delta x in x Suppose the small increment here is delta x, where delta x is a very, very, very small positive quantity. It may be decrement also. It is, it may be a decrement. It may be a very, 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 very small positive quantity or it may be very, 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 very small negative quantity. Is that clear to all of you? So now let us write here corresponding... <coughs> <coughs> corresponding to the given increment corresponding to the given increment delta x in x let there be increment <coughs> corresponding to the given increment it may be decrement also Corresponding to the given increment delta x in x, let there, let there be increment <coughs> delta y in y. So not only increment here, it may be decrement also. Delta x may be positive, delta x may be negative. Delta y may be negative, delta y may be positive. Okay. So now this left hand side becomes y plus delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x let us mark it as number one okay now let us subtract one from two so subtracting subtracting one from two the two butter one minus one so you two butter one minus one y plus delta y minus y is equal to on the right hand side f of x plus delta x minus f of x right so here y y gets cancels or delta y is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x your delta x is a very very small or positive or negative quantity where delta x is a very very small positive or negative quantity here delta y similarly delta y also so let us divide both the sides by delta x dividing both the sides <coughs> dividing both the sides by delta x so it is delta y divided by delta x is equal to f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x so in this case since delta x is a very 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 small positive or negative quantity we can take delta x tends to zero so delta x tends to zero means delta x tends to zero either from the right hand side or from the left hand side okay so oh, sorry this is delta x sorry this is your delta x let us take now taking limit delta x tends to zero on both the sides 
because delta x is a very very small positive or negative quantity that is delta x tends to zero either from the right hand side or from the left hand side so it is a very very small quantity okay so now therefore limit delta x tends to zero delta y upon delta x is equal to on the right hand side also on the right hand side also you can write limit delta x tends to zero then f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x is that clear by definition this limit delta x tends to zero delta y by delta x is defined as dy by dx it is defined as dy by dx which is equal to limit delta x tends to zero f of x plus delta x minus f of x divided by delta x so this is the definition of differentiability of a function okay so now for your convenience thimerko sajilo ko lagi yo delta x la hami h lyau which h where h is a very very small positive or negative quantity let delta x is equal to h so what is dy by dx here so dy by dx is equal to limit in instead of delta x you write h tends to zero so this will be f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h so i think you have understood it so now if limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h exist then the value of this limit is defined as the derivative or differentiation or differential coefficient of function of f of x uh, differential coefficient of the function f of x and is written as dy by dx or you may write f dash of x also or f dash of x is equal to limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h now let us write down the definition now now definition now definition of differentiability if limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h limit h tends to zero means h is approaching towards zero i told you about it in the continuity of a function also and i explained you also in this case uh, what do you mean by limit h tends to zero right in continuity of a function we did it so limit h tends to zero means either h is approaching towards zero from the right hand side or from the left hand side but h is a very very small positive or negative quantity okay so now if limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h exist <coughs> comma then the value of this function then the value of this limit then the value of this limit is defined then the value of this limit is defined then the value of this limit is defined as the derivative is defined as the derivative or differentiation or differentiation or or differential coefficient of or differential coefficient of f of x with respect to x and is written as and is written as dy by dx is equal to limit h tends to zero f of x plus h minus f of x this whole divided by h or you may write instead of dy by dx you may have f dash of x is equal to limit h tends to zero uh, this is your f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h 
so this is the definition of differentiability of a function f of x so you can copy it so you can take the screenshot also or you can copy it so now we'll discuss about the differentiability of a function at a given point okay whether the given function is differentiable or not you have to check whether the given function f of x is differentiable or not okay so i think you have copied it so now <coughs> Now you should know the meaning of right hand derivative and left hand derivative, okay? Now, right hand derivative, right hand derivative. So now what is meant by right hand derivative? Right hand derivative is denoted by R f dash of x right hand derivative is denoted by capital R f dash of x which is equal to limit h tends to 0 plus h tends to 0 plus means h is approaching towards 0 from the right hand side only and the definition is f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h okay so this is your right hand derivative okay so right hand derivative is denoted by capital R f dash of x which is equal to limit h tends to 0 plus f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h where x is any real value where x is a where x is any real value okay now left hand derivative left hand derivative so left hand derivative is denoted by capital L f dash of x which is equal to limit h tends to this will be 0 minus that is h is approaching to a 0 from which side from the left hand side okay h is approaching to a 0 from which side from the left hand side so now in this case the same formula is there f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h is that clear to all of you so now in this case what is meant by f of x plus h you should know the meaning of x plus h here okay so here x exactly equal to x here also x exactly equal to x okay only x plus h is there so you should know the meaning of x plus h here h tends to 0 plus means x is approaching to a 0 from the right hand side and on the right of uh, on the right of h is equal to 0 all the values of h are greater than 0 out here isn't it so h tends to 0 plus means h is greater than 0 right so add x on both the sides x plus h is greater than x that means this x plus h will be always greater than x so we are we are adding x on both the sides that is x plus h is greater than x in this case but in this case h tends to 0 minus means h is less than 0 you add x on both the sides in this case x plus h less than x so in this case this x plus h is always less than x is that clear to all of you so i think you have understood it so if this right hand derivative is equal to left hand derivative then the given function f of x is differentiable then the given function f of x is differentiable at any point okay if this right hand derivative is equal to left hand derivative then the given function f of x is differentiable is that clear to all of you so now uh, suppose you have uh, so let us find out the right hand derivative and left hand derivative at a particular point at a particular point okay so right hand derivative so right hand derivative 
So right hand derivative is denoted by capital R F dash of X is equal to limit as H tends to zero plus F of X plus H minus F of X this whole divided by H. Okay. Uh, let us assume that uh, putting X is equal to A. So if you put X is equal to A, putting X is equal to A. So X square what a particular value keep a A. So if you put X is equal to A, what does it become? Capital R F dash of A is equal to limit H tends to zero plus F of A plus H minus F of A whole divided by H. Is that clear? So F of A means the value for the function f of x when x exactly equal to a. In this case a plus h means what uh, What does it mean a plus h? h tends to 0 plus means h is greater than 0. You add a on both the sides a plus h is greater than a. This a plus h means a plus h is greater than a. Is that clear? Now what is left hand derivative now? <coughs> so left hand derivative so what is left hand derivative capital L f dash of x is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus f of x plus h minus f of x this whole divided by h is that clear so you now you put x is equal to a capital L f dash of a is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus uh, f of a plus h minus f of a this whole divided by h now in this case uh, you know the meaning of f of a f of a means the value of the function f of x when x exactly equal to a but what is f of a plus h what is a plus h in this case so in this case h tends to 0 minus means h is less than 0 and a on both the sides a plus h is less than a so i think you have understood it if both these derivatives are equal, if right hand derivative is equal to left hand derivative, then the function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a. <coughs> so if, if which, which is the right hand derivative? If r f dash of a is equal to l f dash of a, then the function f of x then the function f of x is differentiable then the function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a otherwise not differentiable at x is equal to a yedi r f dash of a not equal to l f dash of a by one say then the function f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to a is that clear to all of you? Now we'll do the geometrical interpretation of dy by dx, right? So now we will do geometrical interpretation of differentiation. Geometrical, geometrical interpretation of differentiation of differentiation that is dy by dx okay now we'll do the geometrical interpretation of differentiation that is dy by dx right so let us take x-axis and y-axis let us take x-axis and y-axis right so this is your x o x dash and this is your y o y dash. Let us assume a function. Let y is equal to f of x. Actually it represents a curve. You know that y is equal to f of x. This is the relation between x and y. This represents a curve. Curve means it may be a straight line. It may be parabola. It may be hyperbola. It may be circle. Uh, it may be ellipse also. Okay, so let us draw the general curve here. Suppose this is your y is equal to f of x. Suppose this is y is equal to f of x. 
So this is let y is equal to f of x. This is the equation of a curve, right? So now let us take x here. Suppose this is x. Suppose this is your x. Okay. And so now suppose this is a point here. Uh, suppose this is a point P. Suppose this is a point P. Okay. So y is equal to f of x here. So what is this point P? This point P will be x comma f of x. If this point is x, this point will be x comma f of x according to y is equal to f of x, isn't it? This is your x, right? So this coordinates of P will be x comma f of x. Let us take our neighboring point Q here. Q is very very near to P. Suppose this Q is very very near to P. That is Q is a neighboring point of P. Okay. So from Q you draw a perpendicular. Suppose this point is x plus h. Where h is a very 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 small positive quantity. You may take this x plus h out here also. You may take here also. So this is your x plus h. Okay. So in this case, h is a very very small positive quantity. h is a very very small positive quantity. The uh, this may be the neighboring. This may be the neighboring point of P. This R point may be the neighboring point of the point P. Okay. So in this case. H is approaching towards zero from the left hand side. H is approaching towards zero from the left hand side. H is approaching towards zero from the left hand side. In this case, H is approaching towards zero from the right hand side. Okay. In this case, H is approaching towards zero from the right hand side. In this case, H is approaching towards zero from the left hand side. Is that clear to all of you? So, what will be its value now? its value will be this is x plus h from o up to this point this will be x plus h and what is the value for y instead of x you put x plus h so it will be f of x plus h is that clear to all of you so let us join these two points so this is a straight line right let us join these two points or you may join p and r also so let us join these two points P and Q. So let us join these two points P and Q. We will get a straight line, right? <coughs> so this is a straight line. Is that clear to all of you? So let us find out the slope of the line PQ. So you know how to find out the slope of a straight line. The slope of a straight line is equal to what was the formula? Difference of ordinates divided by difference of abscissa. That is y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1. So let us assume it as x1 y1. x1 y1 means x2 y2 1 means Take sir. This is also x plus h comma f of x plus h. Buddha or you may take the slope of this line PR by joining P and R, you will get another straight line. You can get the slope of PR also. That is, what is the slope of the straight line is equal to difference of ordinates divided by difference of abscissa. But in this case, h is approaching towards zero from which side from the left hand side in this case h is approaching to a zero from the right hand side of x h tends to zero plus and from here from x plus h to x from here uh, h is tending to a zero from which side from the left hand side that is from the left of x is that clear to all of you 
Here H is tending towards 0 minus. H is a very, very small negative quantity. Here H tends to 0 plus. Here H is a very, very small positive quantity. Okay. So now, in this case, let us take this P point as X1, Y1 and Q point as X2, Y2. So what is the slope of the line PQ? So let us write down the slope of PQ. Okay. So slope of PQ, slope of PQ is equal to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. This is the formula uh, you did in class 11. Uh, that is, uh, what do you mean by slope of a straight line? Actually, what is the definition of the slope of a straight line? The slope of a straight line is defined as the tan of an angle that the straight line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. That makes with the positive direction of x-axis. That is, the slope of a straight line is defined as the tangent of an angle that the straight line makes with the positive direction of the x-axis. Okay? So there, there was a formula for slope of the straight line which is equal to difference of the ordinates divided by difference of the abscissa. So which is equal to, what is y2 here? It is f of x plus h f of x plus h minus what is y1 what is y1 here y1 is f of x divided by what is x2 minus x1 what is x2 here x plus h minus and what is x1 here this is x here xx gets cancels so which is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h okay but in this case this Q is a neighboring point P. Q is a peak. That is when H tends to 0. Suppose Q is a peak. Suppose P is a peak. What is the answer? This is the tangent. This is the Q. This H tends to 0. H tends to 0. It becomes x, f of x. That is. Q will coincide with P. If Q will coincide P with P, this straight line will become the tangent to the curve at the point P. Okay? So now, so therefore, when H tends to 0, when limit H tends to 0, F of X plus H minus F of X whole divided by H. That means, when this H, when this H tends to 0, that means when this Q point coincides with P, when this Q point coincides with P, when this Q point coincides with P, this straight line will be a tangent to the curve at the point P. So here you can write down limit H tends to 0. F of X plus H minus F of X whole divided by H. So now by definition, this is what dy by dx which is equal to dy by dx which is equal to what dy by dx that is when h tends to zero this q will coincide with p isn't it when h tends to zero this q will coincide with p then at that condition this straight line will be a tangent to the curve at the point p so by definition, limit h tends to 0, f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h is equal to, that is your dy by dx. Is that clear? So geometrically, this dy by dx represents the slope of the tangent to a curve y is equal to f of x. Is that clear to all of you? So geometrically, what does dy by dx represent? So geometrically, dy by dx represents the slope of a tangent to a curve y is equal to f of x. Is that clear to all of you? So write down. So I think you have understood this uh, figure. So you can draw the figure. So again, I'm drawing the figure, okay? Because figure is not clear, I think. I know. So, my figure only grams on bonus. So, now the figure bonus in the side. Uh, you have understood it, I think. So, you can copy it xo x dash. This is your y o y dash, right? Suppose this is a curve. 
this is the curve y is equal to f of x right uh, suppose this is the particular point p this is uh, this is your x so this may be your x comma f of x and here y is equal to f of x is there uh, suppose this point is uh, q suppose this point is q so q is the neighboring point of p and from q you draw a perpendicular upon the x-axis okay and suppose this is x plus h okay so q is a neighbor, neighboring point to p q is very very close to p okay now its coordinates are x into f of x plus h so in this case h is tending towards 0 from the right hand side of x h is tending towards 0 plus means h is approaching towards 0 from which side from the right hand side okay uh, the point may be out here this is r this is also x plus h but in this case h is a very very small negative number in this case h is a very very small positive quantity which is tending towards 0 but in this case h is a very very small negative quantity which is tending towards 0 so in this case h tends to 0 minus is that clear to all of you so this one is also x comma suppose this is x plus h comma f of x plus h but in this case h is a very very small negative number but in this case h is a very very small positive number okay so join these two points you'll get a straight line right or you may join these two points also you'll get a straight line there also okay so just now we have found out the slope of pq what is slope of pq is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 so we have got it so i think you have understood it isn't it uh, this is the simplification so when limit h tends to 0 means when h tends to 0 oh sorry this is x plus h uh, this is your x plus h this is your f of x f of x plus h when h tends to 0 this q will coincide with p and in that case this straight line will be like this isn't it that is this straight line will be a tangent to the curve at the point p on it is that clear so this becomes limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h by definition this limit is equal to dy by dx okay when h tends to 0 then this q will coincide with p h tends to 0 when you x comma f of x by you that means q will coincide with p in that case this straight line will be the tangent to the curve at the point p so by definition limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h is equal to dy by dx so i think you have understood it so geometrically what does this dy by dx represent dy by dx represents the slope of a tangent to a curve at any point x comma y on the curve okay so you can copy it so you have to write down the geometrical interpretation now so you can take the screen screenshot here also So let us write down the geometrical interpretation now. So geometrically, geometrically dy by dx represents represents a slope. dy by dx represents a slope of a tangent geometrically dy by dx represents a slope of a tangent to a curve to a curve y is equal to f of x at any point at any point x comma y on it so what is the geometrical meaning of dy by dx geometrically dy by dx represents a slope of a tangent to a curve y is equal to f of x at any point x comma y on it so therefore slope of a tangent slope of a tangent is equal to this is your dy by 
dx so i think you have understood it okay so you can copy it we'll do a theorem now So now we will do this theorem that is if the function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a then f of x must be continuous at x is equal to a. So if the given function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a then the function f of x must be continuous at that point x is equal to a. Okay now we will prove it. So solution since the function the function f of x is differentiable is differentiable at x is equal to a therefore limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h is equal to f dash of a. Since it is given that the function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a, then therefore what can write? Limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a whole divided by h is equal to f dash of a. Is that clear? So we can write down from the definition that is limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a whole divided by h is equal to f dash of a. Okay. And so now we have to prove that the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to a. Now let us find out its value now. Therefore f of a plus h minus f of a which is equal to here we can write down so in this case since it is differentiable so f dash of a is a finite uh, which is a finite f dash of a is which is a which is a finite quantity finite quantity means it is a defined quantity right so f dash a f dash of a is a finite quantity that means it is a defined quantity right so let us find out the value of this expression f of a plus h minus f of a which is equal to which is equal to f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h into h right time in a key or you is like into h skin on the h and we have divided and multiplied by h so let us take the limit on both the sides so therefore limit h tends to zero within second bracket let us write this one f of a plus h minus f of a is equal to limit h tends to 0 within second bracket f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h into h. Is that clear to all of you? So you can copy it. So we have taken limit h tends to 0 on both the sides. Okay. Now in the next step what will you do? Now we have to simplify it taking the limit right so which is equal to now since f of a is free from h you don't have to write limit out here because f of a is constant right so or limit this is your h tends to 0 f of a plus h right then you don't have to remain you don't have to write you don't have to write limit for f of a because it is free from h now we can write down limit wherever there is h for both the term you can write down the limit which is equal to limit h tends to 0 and this is f of a plus h minus f of a divided by h right into limit h tends to 0 h limit h tends to 0 this is your h right so or you can write here limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a which is equal to by definition this one is f dash of a right so this is your f dash of a into 
Limit h tends to 0, h means it is always 0. So h is approaching to a 0. So you can take the value of h as 0. So h is equal to 0. Other you call it 0. So f dash of a is a finite quantity. It is a defined quantity. So f dash of a into 0 is equal to 0. Right? Or limit h tends to 0, f of a plus h minus f of a is equal to 0. Right? So next, what will you do? Minus f of a, take it to the right hand side. Or this is your limit, h tends to 0, f of a plus h is equal to f of a. That is the function. So this is the definition of continuity of a function at x is equal to a. So we can write here, hence the function, hence the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to a. So it is proved. That is, if the function f of x is differentiable at x is equal to a, then the function f of x must be continuous at x is equal to a. So is that clear to all of you? But the converse part is not always true. That is, if the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to a, then the converse part is always not true. That means if the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to a, then the function f of x may or may not be differentiable at x is equal to a. Okay. So you can copy it. We'll do the converse part now. The converse part is not always true. That is if the function f of x is continuous at a given point x is equal to a, then the function f of x may or may not be continue, may, may or may not be differentiable at x is equal to a. Okay. So you can copy it. So now let's do the converse part. Converse part when you say ulta, I know. Uh, but here you can write, but the converse part is not always true. That is, that is, if the function f of x, if the function f of x is continuous, is continuous at x is equal to a comma then the function f of x then the function f of x may or may not be or may not be differentiable may not be differentiable at x is equal to a is that clear to all of you? The converse part is not always true. That is, if the function f of x is continuous at x is equal to a, then the function f of x may or may not be differentiable at x is equal to a. So let us take an example in this case. Okay. So let us take the example. Uh, let f of x is equal to x when x greater than or equal to 0 and is equal to minus x when x less than 0. First of all, let us prove that it is continuous at x is equal to 0. But this is not differentiable at x is equal to 0. You have to prove it. Okay. The converse part should be proved. That is, it may not be differentiable at x is equal to 0. So let us first prove that it is continuous at x is equal to 0. So what is the method now? For right hand limit, for right hand limit how can you write right hand limit limit x tends to 0 plus f of x is equal to so what is the meaning of x tends to 0 plus x is approaching to a 0 from the right hand side and on the right of x is equal to 0 all the values of x are greater than 0 what is the value for f of x when x greater than 0 it is x so that is limit x tends to 0 plus x so you can put x tends to 0 plus means 0 that means you can put 0 here so for left hand limit for left hand limit 
we can write limit x tends to 0 minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus what is the meaning of x tends to 0 minus x is approaching towards 0 from the left hand side and on the left of x is equal to 0 all the values of x are less than 0 so in that case what is the value for f of x when x less than 0 it is minus x so write down minus x which is equal to 0 minus means 0 x tends to 0 minus means x is approaching towards 0 from the left hand side only but you can take x is equal to 0 so minus 0 means it is 0 okay now at x is equal to 0 so at x is equal to 0 means x exactly equal to 0 what is the value for f of x so when x is equal to 0 f of x is equal to x therefore f of x is equal to x that is f of 0 is equal to 0 that means this right hand limit is equal to left hand limit is equal to f of 0 that is therefore limit x tends to 0 plus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 0 minus f of x is equal to f of 0 that means all these three values are equal so what can you write therefore the function f of x therefore the function f of x is continuous is continuous at x is equal to 0 so it is done now you should prove that this function of f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 0 is that clear for that you have to find out the right hand derivative and the left hand derivative okay so i think you have understood it you can copy it You can take the screenshot also or you can pause the video and you can copy it. So let us do the second part that is you have to prove that this function f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to 0, right? So now let us write down for right hand derivative. For right hand derivative for right hand derivative what can you write capital R f dash of x is equal to so what is the formula limit h tends to 0 f of x plus h minus f of x whole divided by h right so what should you put for x we are checking we are checking the differentiability of the function at x is equal to 0. We are checking the differentiability of the function at x exactly equal to 0. So you put x is equal to 0 out here. Okay. So therefore capital R f dash of 0 is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of 0 plus h right minus f of 0 divided by h is that clear now so now next uh, next one is which is equal to limit h tends to 0 plus limit h tends to 0 plus this is your f of h minus f of 0 whole divided by h so what is the meaning of h tends to 0 plus you know that h tends to 0 plus means h is greater than 0 h tends to 0 plus means h is greater than 0 what is the value for f of h in this case so you know that uh, for h greater than 0 you should take x greater than 0 what is x greater than 0 if x is greater than 0 what is the value for f of x x isn't it so f of x is equal to x in that case so what is f of h now now instead of x you should put h because there is h there f of h is equal to h is that clear so which is equal to limit this is h tends to 0 plus what is f of h that is your h minus what is f of 0 f of 0 means when you put x is equal to 0 f of x is equal to x put x is equal to 0 f of 0 is equal to 0 f of 0 is 0 that means f of 0 means 0 divided by h which is equal to limit h tends to 0 plus 
this is your h by h you can cancel them right so i think you have understood this uh, example so which is equal to limit h tends to 0 plus this is your 1 which is free from h yeah it's nice one so this is your one so this is your right hand derivative what is the value of the right hand deriv derivative which is equal to one so let us find out the left hand derivative now so let us write for left hand derivative for left hand derivative for left hand derivative what can you write a capital l f dash of x is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus f of x plus h minus f of x this whole divided by h right so put x is equal to 0 so because we are checking the differentiability of the function at x is equal to 0 right so putting x is equal to 0 what do we get capital l f dash of 0 is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus this is f of 0 plus h minus f of 0 this whole divided by h tamro you right hand limit kotha ekha cha one right hand derivative the value of the right hand derivative is one yad rakhnu yo right hand derivative is one right so next so this is your left hand derivative let us simplify it further limit h tends to 0 minus what is f of 0 plus h actually it is f of h minus f of 0 divided by h now limit h tends to 0 minus you should know the value for f of h from here right so h tends to 0 minus means h is less than 0 right so when h is less than 0 that means you should check at x less than 0 because you should know the value for f of h from here when x is less than 0, what is the value for f of x? That is your minus x. So f of x is equal to minus x, right? So put x is equal to h now. So f of h is equal to minus h. So which is equal to here? Limit h tends to 0 minus. What is the value for f of h now? Your f of h is equal to minus h. Minus 0 divided by h. You have understood now? So I think you have understood this example. Now, next step, which is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus. This is your minus h divided by h. Back because that is 0, you don't have to write it. So cancel it. So which is equal to limit h tends to 0 minus. This will be your minus 1, which is equal to, since this is free from h, you don't have to write down limit. Or you don't have to put the value of the limit here all here also because this minus one is free from h okay so which is equal to minus one so are they equal is right hand derivative is equal left hand derivative no because right hand derivative was one but left hand derivative is minus one they are not equal that means the function f of x is not differentiable at x is equal to zero so the converse part is not always true okay so let us write here since since right hand derivative at x is equal to 0 not equal to left hand derivative at x is equal to 0 therefore the given function therefore the given therefore the given function f of x is not differentiable is not differentiable at x is equal to 0 hence the converse part is not always true hence the converse part is not always true is that clear to all of you that means if the function f of x is continuous at a given point x is equal to a then the function f of x may or may not be differentiable at the given point x is equal to a so the converse part is not always true is that clear to all of you so you revise the 
problem or the theorem that we did today so this much is for today so in the next uh, in the next online class we'll do problems on this continuity and differentiability so you go through the theory portion try to understand it then we'll do uh, problems in the next online class that is from continuity and differentiability okay so this much is for today